In this lesson, we're going to be talking about ARP spoofing. Now, we talked about ARP, or the Address Resolution Protocol, in a previous lesson. And as I mentioned then, it's a very simple protocol that's designed to map an IP address, or a Layer 3 address, to a MAC address, or a Layer 2 address. So if I've got an IP address, and I want to deliver something locally on my network, I need a MAC address to know where to send it. That's even true trying to send something off the local network. I need the MAC address of my local gateway. ARP is a very simple protocol that just does a very simple mapping between Layer 3 addresses and Layer 2 addresses. Because it's very simple and there's no authentication or verification built into it, it's prone to what we call spoofing. So I can pretend to be a system that I'm not actually. So I do that by sending out what we call gratuitous ARPs. A gratuitous ARP is where I am sending out a reply without actually getting a request. I could actually do a spoof here of my default gateway on my system. And what that would allow me to do is it would allow me to get messages that were destined for the default gateway. So I could see messages that somebody was trying to send off the network and they would come to me rather than going to the default gateway because you can see here I'm actually sending out a reply saying 192.168.1.1 is actually at and this right here happens to be my MAC address. So I'm sending this out as a broadcast, and you can see this here, FFFFFF, and so forth. That's a broadcast. So I'm sending this out to everyone on the network. I'm actually connected to a system that isn't my local system, but I've got Wireshark running here. I'm going to stop the capture here, and let's just take a look at the ARP messages. Now, what I should see down here is an awful lot of is at messages. And you can see that's true. We've got an ARP reply for 192.168.1.1. It's trying to redirect messages to a different system. If I clear this out, what I might see here, depending on the type of traffic that's going on on my network, is I might actually see messages that are being sent to a different host. And as I said, actually, I'm doing a capture from a system that's different than I was doing an ARP spoof on. It's actually the other system that would see those messages. What I could do is I've got this ARP reply. I could actually open up a new tab here and get into that system. And now if I were to do a TCP dump... I could do a capture here and see whether any messages were going to this system that were originally destined for another system. And actually, there's not an awful lot of traffic going on on the network right now. You do see a couple of messages here that would be going to that particular system. But you can see all of the ARP messages, of course, that are being sent out. I'm doing a spoofing here where I'm actually requesting messages for my default gateway be sent to me rather than the gateway. Now, there's some other trickery that has to happen here. We've got to have something in the background that will actually send the messages off to the default gateway after we've seen them. Otherwise, it's pretty apparent what's going on when everybody's off-net traffic starts behaving strangely and web pages aren't loading and various other internet-related services just stop functioning. But as you can see, ARP spoofing is actually a pretty simple process. There are a handful of tools that will do the spoofing for you. I just showed you one here called ARP spoof. There's another one called Ettercap that will run under Linux and some other operating systems. There are other tools like Kane Enable, for instance, that will do ARP spoofing as a function of something else that they do. But ARP spoofing generally is pretty simple to do, and it's really a result of just the simplicity of the protocol and the lack of authentication and verification that was built into the protocol when it was originally designed. So that's ARP spoofing and some of the things that you can do with it.